Hey friends, welcome back to my kitchen or welcome if this is your first time here. Tonight I'm bringing you along as I make a no fuss and no fail Easter dinner for my family. And these are all recipes you've never seen on my channel before. And while they're still traditional holiday recipes, they're quite a bit different than what you've seen in my other holiday dinner videos. But what they do have in common is that each one is quick and easy and oh so delicious. So let's get started with a grape salad. In a little mixing bowl, I'm going to use four ounces. That's half a block of softened cream cheese. I'm going to put in about a sixth of a cup of granulated sugar and one half cup of sour cream. I'm going to get this mixed up till it's just combined. Then I'm going to pour in about a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Now we're just going to continue to beat it until it's nice and fluffy and combined. The great thing about this little grape salad, just besides that it's delicious, is it's kind of versatile. You can use it on its own. You can use it as a side dish. It's even, you know, a good dessert. I would say don't let the fruit aspect of this little recipe fool you. It's not necessarily healthy. <laughs> But it is good. I like to make it for special occasions like Easter and Christmas. And a little stretches a long way with this recipe. It can really feed a crowd. This is also a classic southern dish that you're going to see at any baby shower or wedding shower. And I'm having this recipe tonight. So I've got a pound of red and a pound of green seedless grapes. And of course, you just got to pull them off the little stems. You don't want anything to have a stem in it. Then we're gonna wash these really good and let them get nice and dry. Now we're gonna put our grapes in here and begin to toss them. And I just think it's a little easier to start with like half of them and then add the rest. And I'll be honest with you, I may have a little bit too much cream cheese and sour cream mixture in here. It doesn't take as much as you'd think. And we may have just snacked on too many of these grapes when they were being picked off and washed. Sorry. It's <laughs> alright. <laughs> like most good old southern recipes, this one is best macerated in the refrigerator overnight. Then tomorrow we'll put a couple more things on top of it right before we serve it. We're going to start today with some honey brown sugar glazed carrots because we're doing them in the crock pot. You might be thinking that glazed carrots is a regular Easter side dish. Around here it's not. For any and every holiday dinner with my crew, it's the sweet potato casserole. They're all about it. But I think these will be a great addition, maybe even a little healthier swap out for a heavy sweet potato casserole. I sprayed my crock pot in the bottom. I'm starting with two tablespoons of water. I'm putting in one pound of baby carrots and I'm actually halving this recipe. I'm gonna sprinkle two tablespoons of brown sugar all over the top of those carrots. I'm just gonna eyeball about a tablespoon and a half of honey. I've actually just thrown caution to the wind here. <laughs> I love honey. Just a tiny little bit of salt. And I am going to cut up two tablespoons of butter. And I'm just going to dot them all over the top of these carrots. Pop that lid on. I'm going to cook them on high after two hours. I'm going to give them a really good stir. Then we'll cook them for another hour to two hours just until they're done. And I'm cooking these in a four quart casserole dish. I'll leave the full recipe for the carrots in the description box. And even still, you would use a four quart crock pot. It's plenty large enough for these. We're gonna try to make a little mini version of a copycat honey baked ham. The ham that I'm using today is this little Kentucky Legend quartered ham. I love these. I get them all the time. This one is right under two pounds and it'll go a long ways. If I make these for dinner, we always have leftovers that we can have with breakfast biscuits. I can save some of this and put it in pinto beans today. Even though this one's already brown sugared, we're going to do a little bit more with it just for demonstration purposes. We're going to go ahead and mix up the little seasoning mixture that we'll be putting on it and I use just a little less than a quarter cup of white sugar. I'm going to sprinkle in just a smidgen of paprika. My ham is not large so it won't take much. going to crack in just a smidgen of black pepper. 
and I'm using about half of a teaspoonful of pumpkin pie spice. The recipe called for cinnamon, allspice, nutmeg, and all these things that are in pumpkin pie spice. So I'm just using it, and we're just gonna combine all this together. Again, I'll have a full recipe for this, linked down in the description box for you. Now, we'll just set this aside. This little ham is, of course, fully cooked. That's my favorite piece right there on the end, and I think the cook gets to sample it. <laughs> the spiral hams that we buy nowadays to have on the holidays already cooked. We're basically just heating them up. I'm gonna take about a fourth a cup of water and just pour it around the ham. Then I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of honey and I'm just gonna spread it out over the top of this. Doesn't have to be perfect. It's all gonna get gooey and melt over it. Now I'm gonna tint mine with some aluminum foil and I'm gonna put it in a 425 degree oven. It'll probably take it 20 to 30 minutes to get heated and then we'll go in with our seasoning mixture. And what is wonderful about this, if you have a larger ham like what you would feed your whole family with on Easter, you can do this whole part in the crock pot. Just getting it warmed up all the way through. Saves your oven space for other things. Today I'm making something I've seen and heard about a million times. It's a pineapple casserole from Paula Dean. I'm gonna do everything right here in my casserole dish. I'm gonna spray it first, and this is not quite a nine by 13. It's more narrow, it's kind of deep, but it's a narrow dish. I'm gonna put in one cup of regular granulated sugar, six tablespoons of flour, I'm gonna give this a little whisk in here to kind of break the flour up and get it combined in with the sugar. Now I'm putting in two cups of sharp shredded cheddar cheese. I'm just gonna use my hands. We're gonna get that mixed in just a little bit. Now I'm putting in both of those 20 ounce cans of chunk pineapple. I did drain them, but we reserved some of that juice. Now we're just gonna mix all of this in together. I have seen people make this and brag on this, and I've wanted to try it for years, and I've just never taken the time or the opportunity to do it, so I can't wait. I think basically what we're doing to pineapple here is what we have done to sweet potatoes. We've taken something that nature's given us that's nice and healthy, and we're just turning it into a big sugar fest. <laughs> I took my Ritz crackers and crushed them up. Really, I just kind of crumbled them. This is a little over a cup, and then I'm gonna pour in my stick of melted butter. I'm gonna take six tablespoons of the pineapple juice I saved and put it in there. Stir this topping together. If you wanted to, you could pour your pineapple juice over your casserole. It's all going to the same place anyway but I just thought this seemed a little bit easier. Now we're just gonna put this topping all over here. Let's get it spread out a little bit. I tried to change the color on my light for you. Yellows never really show up right on camera. They turn weird colors of orange. I'm standing here thinking I've got a little bit of pecans left from the grape salad. I might throw a little bit of that on there too. I think that'd be good. I mean, we do it to sweet potato casserole, why not pineapple? Now we'll put this in a 350 degree oven for about 35 minutes. When we bring out our pineapple casserole, our ham has also been heated thoroughly. This was so gooey and delicious. We just had to let it sit here and cool just a little while. While we finished up the rest of the meal, we need to get back to our ham. Now that it's thoroughly warmed up, we're gonna glaze it again with just a little bit more honey and get it all brushed on here. Then we're gonna take that little spice mixture that we mixed up, put it all over the top of this ham and really press it into it. Then we're gonna put it back in the oven to get nice and baked and crispy with this next dish. I've got a casserole dish out and I'm just gonna give it a quick little spray. We're gonna make green beans and they're not my kind of green beans. Totally different. Got a 12 ounce bag of frozen green beans. Just gonna put those out in here. I'm gonna drizzle them with about a tablespoon of olive oil. Season them up with a little bit of salt, black pepper, and garlic powder. We're gonna toss them around. 
There's not a piece of bacon or bacon grease or brown sugar or nothing like that in here. I don't know what my family's going to do, but I found this recipe from In Jamie's Kitchen. I found all kinds of good stuff there, and I think In Jamie's Kitchen, she probably rules roost from what I've seen of her. She says these green beans went viral, and people ask about them all the time. So I thought we'd give them a try too. All we're gonna do is put them in the oven at 400 degrees for about 35 minutes. When these come out of the oven, all that's left to do is to take some grated Parmesan cheese and sprinkle as much as you want over the top. We're just gonna toss them around, and these were really good. I was so surprised at how much my family liked them. After I pulled these out of the oven, I cranked the broil up on my little ham. Look at that glaze. It got crunchy and crispy, just like you want it. This was absolutely delicious. Look, it's almost like candy coated on the outside. We loved it. The only thing left to do to our carrots now that they're all cooked, I give them one more stir and I'm just going to sprinkle a little parsley on them just to make them pretty, give a little extra fresh flavor to them. And these also were delicious. Now let's finish off our grape salad just by sprinkling about a tablespoon or so of brown sugar over the top. And this is definitely too much cream cheese but we'll still enjoy it. I like my grape salad where you can still kind of see the color of the grapes. Now we're going to sprinkle in some chopped pecans. This really is a pretty salad all presented up like this. It's very delicious too. Look at all of this plated up together. The ham just not only tastes great, but it just presented beautifully. I can't say enough good things about the pineapple casserole. Even the skeptics loved it. The green beans were amazing. And really, any of these recipes are great for a holiday or any weeknight meal, too. And the grape salad, like I said, it's really a dessert with that brown sugar that gets all seeped into that cream cheese. But then you got just a little bit of crunch. Friends, I just decided to take every single holiday dinner video I've ever made and put them all into one easy to find playlist. Whether it's Easter, Thanksgiving, Christmas, or 4th of July, they're all gonna be there. I found these recipes are really interchangeable for any holiday dinner you'd have. So take a look at it right here if you're still wanting more ideas. Any recipe you choose from any one of these videos would be great year round. Thank you so much for watching tonight. I appreciate you, and until next week, I send you love from my kitchen.